hello everyone welcome to my channel cryptoware today we are going to analyze another malware which is a portable executable and we'll be using just few tools we are not going to perform any dynamic analysis but yes we'll be performing some debugging which is kind of dynamic analysis where we are actually trying to understand uh, how a malware is dropping other set of malwares so moving ahead so we'll be using the first few tools that I have already discussed in my previous video on static, uh, statically analyzing a malicious sample. And it was a .NET sample, so I'll be sharing the link in the description below. So let's first open this sample in PE Studio. And let's gain some information about it from here. So virus total already indicates it as malicious 61 out of 71 so it is actually malicious and has a very high score and here you can see that it is possibly a dropper uh, we can see some more information till the time it is running we can uh, check it in detect it easy as well let's see if we can get some more information about it for example, the entropy is 7. So maybe it is packed, but not that packed. So some of its section could be packed. There's a possibility and we need to uh, use a 32-bit decompiler or uh, debugger that we'll be using for this. Here we can see the manifest file or the manifest is uh, something very random. Um, let's open it in, detect it easy. So in detect it easy, it does not tell us if it is packed or not or what kind of packer. It is not a .NET executable. So we can use x64 dbg for understanding the rest of the details. You can use any other debugger of your choice. You can also go for disassembler, but I'm using debugger of as I'm more comfortable with it. And I mean x64, I'm more comfortable. I'm used to using it using it and uh, I want to see what else what kind of information that we can get it from there so it does not seem to be a very common packer if there has been used any we can check for the entropy over here and here we can see that it says 87 packed and this specific section is packed so maybe this section contains some information that should not be, you know, visible or that should not be shown. So we'll see if it is possible for us to identify how to unpack them or we can identify anything else from here. So we'll be running it uh, in x64. Since we saw that it was a 32 bit, so we'll be opening it in x32 dbg. Yes. So this is how the entire uh, tool looks like. There are lots of information. So we are going to do some of the very basic things. Um, for example, looking for some strings that we have done previously as well. We can go to search for all user modules and string references. We can see what all strings are here visible. So if there is anything interesting that we can, you know, put a breakpoint on. Okay, so fine. We will look uh, into through. Uh, we'll look through some other options also, like threads, source, references. References is something that we saw just now. Call stack, memory map. Here you can see how the memory has been mapped and the addresses related to it. We can see breakpoints. I've already set some breakpoints over here. So I'll show it again. So here you can see the command where you can run, uh, where you can set breakpoints. So I'll use BP if it's not visible. And I'll put virtual alloc. Virtual alloc is a very common uh, function that is used by malware for uh, setting up a memory uh, area or region 
uh, it is mostly used whenever a malware is about to get unpacked or so it needs a region where it can be unpacked right so in those cases we have we use virtual alloc the threat actors use virtual alloc so uh, it is not always necessary for necessarily used for unpacking but for a very variety of re uh, reasons for example if you want to perform some injection technique at, in those cases also you need to use virtual alloc so that you can allocate some memory to a specific region where you can inject the process or the dll or any piece of code shell code for example that you want to uh, execute next would be write process memory because if i happen to see that uh, uh, virtual alloc has been used so if there is uh, there's a chance that it is trying to execute or it is creating a region where it wants to execute a shell code so it it might be writing the code into that region and that is the reason why we need to use write process memory uh resume thread is another call or function that i'll be using because what if it is trying to perform some kind of um injection or process hollowing most probably so in those cases i would like to you know put a breakpoint on resume thread as well i'm not sure if it is using anything like that but is just i'm just checking if it has been used because a lot of malware most commonly use these kinds of apis another would be is debugger present because most of this um, malware do check for the presence of debugger so we'll check if there is any deep, if this call has been used this function has been used so few more things where i have actually added is i have seen shell execute a so here also i have added a breakpoint so how do you see those options like you can right click search for all current modules you can see intermodular calls and here you can see the shell execute option so from here also you can so here is also another shell execute if you want we can you know set a breakpoint over there just in case we want to uh, so since shell execute is used so most probably it is trying to execute something so let's see so we'll be running this and it will hit, hit the first breakpoint which will be the ent entry point which is a default breakpoint so here we can see that push evp is there and address of the entry point uh, it, it is where the breakpoint has happened so we'll run again and this time it has stopped at shell execute yeah so in shell execute you can see it is trying to make a call if you want to see at the stack you can see that it is you run it is opening powershell and there is an encoded command here so i have already copied it in the notepad and this is the entire command so this shell execute is actually running a powershell command and this powershell this encoded string once after decoded after decoding you can see that it is trying to open a message box so what we can do is we can open process hacker and here you can see already our x x32 dbg under which this malware is uh, that we are uh, actually checking we are debugging so this is also present over here so if i happen to run uh, if i happen to click on run it stops at resume thread and then we again run and we can see that powershell has been invoked over here in process hacker where you can see that it tells us that it is actually running an encoded command a powershell script so if we run again we see the message box that we saw over there your computer is not supported please try again here you can see that this after decoding this is what it looks like this is the message that this opens the message box yes this opens the message box and this is the message that it prints so it does not look as suspicious as that so we click on okay 
and again we will keep an eye on the process hacker and see what else is happening because we saw that there were more than one shell execute function that has been used so I'll click on it again and now it stopped somewhere we'll just run it again and there's another shell execute and here we do not see anything but here you can see in the stack that it is opening this specific directory app data roaming and a.exe is one executable that it is dropping over there another thing that if we run again you see that a.exe is running so sorry is over there it has been dropped over there and most probably that it may seem that it is running so we need to check whether we have executed or not because it was shell execute so most probably that it has already started running another shell execute is there so let's see what it does so here you can see in the stack that it is opening another file which is b.exe and if we click on next run here we see that b.exe uh, has executed so we go to this path this app data roaming and we see that a.exe and b.exe both of the executables have been dropped over here so the next thing would be analyzing these two files we are not going to analyze anything else because this is most probably a dropper and it is trying to execute uh, drop two executables in our case and then uh, make them run into your system so we'll simply close this we will terminate b.exe if it is running and we'll close x32 or maybe we can keep it as it is for now and here you can see that a.exe and b.exe has been dropped so if we open pe studio this is the first exe that we started with the analysis which is a dropper as it very co correctly said or mentioned as the uh, detection name over here so we'll simply close this and We'll open T Studio for A.exe and B.exe. So we'll see what A.exe does. We'll open another window for P Studio. And here B.exe is there. So this is b.exe and here you can already see that the virus total has mentioned it as malicious 66 out of 72 and from here we can see that it is red line most probably it is a red line stealer there is a very high chance because most of the detection name has been mentioned that way. Uh, we can wait for a while till we see some more details related to it. Uh, one important thing that we want to see is the entropy which is 5.9 and this is a dot net and in our previous uh, video we did discuss how we can analyze and unpack dot net executable so yes i'll be putting the link in the description below so you can check uh, and you can actually analyze it that way and here you can see that this is a .NET executable and the entropy is very low. So again, by basic decompilation process, uh, I mean, using a basic decompiler tool, you will, you will be able to analyze the sample. It won't be much difficult. If we happen to check a.exe, even a.exe has a very decent score, which is 27. And it says like dropper or coin miner so maybe it is kind of minor it wants to perform some kind of mining process we are not sure about it we'll wait if we gather some more information related to a.exe now since we are sure about the fact that b.exe is a dotnet executable and here a.exe has not been mentioned as a dotnet executable and the entropy is higher than the uh, than uh, b.exe so we can check it in detect it easy 
we can actually check both the samples and detect it easy. So we can simply copy the path from here. So a dot exe would be one. So here you can see that it is a compiler. Nothing has been mentioned about whether it is packed or not or which kind of packer has been used. You can check the entropy from here. And it says not packed. So basically it is not packed. If you want, we can actually analyze. The next would be analyzing, checking b.exe b.exe is a .NET uh, sample that we already saw. No information related to the packer. And we can check entropy. And here also it says that not packed. Here also you can see that it is mentioned that 74% it is not packed. So let's start with b.exe. And... I have already opened b.exe because a.exe is not a .NET, so it won't open here. So b.exe is something that I have already opened in ILSpy. You can use any decompiler, .NET decompiler of your choice. We'll just quickly go through it because we have actually uh, learned about how to analyze an unpacked .NET executable using this tool in our previous video. So here we'll just very quickly go through what it is possibly doing. So here I'll look for some uh, interesting names for now, like all wallet rule. So we can see what it is doing. It is trying to return file path directory full name, local app data, okay. It is now trying to enumerate something, some information most probably. So pattern wallet. So we are trying to identify certain things from uh, the keywords that we happen to see over here. Also, these things are written in that way. They are just replacing ASF with a new character 12. So most probably they have defined uh, an array from where they are actually replacing something. We are not going to uh, replace or, you know, completely deobfuscate it or something like that. We are just going through some of the common, some of the activities or functions that it is trying to perform just to understand. We're just quickly going through everything. You can see a function named Chrome. So here with the name, you can see that it is scanning. So most probably might be scanning for your passwords, for the cookies. You can see how it has used login data. It has mentioned user. Mm -hmm. So it is trying to gather some information related to your Chrome browser. Scan passwords, scan co cookie mostly. So it is a stealer. So there were few things that we observed that it is trying to steal uh, most probably cookies, uh, your login passwords, all those credentials most probably. Another thing that uh, I would like to show you is there was a term called wallet. So here you can see coin mine rule. So there is a good chance that it is a crypto stealer cryptocurrency stealer there's a good chance of it let's see if we happen to see any information related to that i'm just quickly going through uh, Any function that, so yeah, exodus rule is something that we can see. Okay. Yes. So here it is trying to get folder path. If there is some exodus uh, wallet is being used by the user. So it is looking for the path and most probably it will try to gather information. 
uh, or all details related to the wallet. So as I mentioned, that is most probably a, a cryptocurrency stealer as well, along with stealing all other details. I'll share the hashes of these uh, samples so you can actually go through and see what all functionalities uh, that it is using so that you can identify uh, by yourself. I'm not going to analyze all of them or I'm not going to go through entire functions over here. And that's it for today. We will be analyzing some more malicious samples uh, in our further videos and we'll go deeper into how you can analyze a malware using debugger. This is just a very small intro kind of a video where we saw how we can perform some basic analysis using a debugger. We'll definitely go through uh, how this tool is used and how you can further uh, analyze a malicious sample using all these tools in my upcoming videos. So thank you so much. Stay tuned and see you in, in the next video.